Well, this guy has truly made the takedown a thing of beauty in mixed martial arts with respect to yourself and George St. Pierre and the truly great takedown artists. This guy's closing the gap and, and entering that company in the eyes of men. Oh, absolutely, because he's done such a great job of timing takedowns. You didn't see, I haven't seen anyone so good at slipping a jab into a takedown since George St. Pierre. Right. He does a phenomenal job of getting from step one to step two before his opponent even realizes, now he's in on my leg. And if they do get their hips back, immediately he's up into a foot sweep, or a headlock, or an inside trip. It's just so many different ways for him to get you to the floor that he will throw every single one at you every single time. And a lot of fighters talk about that wrestling maintenance and how hard it is, right, over the course of a career to continue to drill those things. He talks a lot about that, and that's why he's continued to realize success here in the UFC. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners in this division, DC, and I know how many chokes you have in your arsenal. Offensive jiu-jitsu, defensive jiu-jitsu doesn't get much better than this guy. It doesn't get as high level in terms of jiu-jitsu knowledge. He knows in every exchange that he's the guy that's processing things at a different level, from the arm bar submissions that he has shown in the octagon to the beautiful guillotine chokes that he does over and over again. And don't think that he won't roll for a knee bar and get a submission. Right. It's just constant danger when you're in the jiu-jitsu with this guy. And even the high-level wrestlers that he's fought have paused to try to take him down because of that patented guillotine. It's so truly a case of pick your poison with this Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. And now our tale of the tape for this lightweight fight. Four years, the difference in age between these two fighters with similar height and some differences in reach. The veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, buying out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 23 wins, eight losses. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, Iron Michael Chan. Now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 33 wins, nine losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. The veteran Herb Dean draws the assignment here. Ready? You ready to fight? All right, so here we go. Round one is underway. I can't wait to see how this fight plays out because he told us on Thursday that despite his opponent's submission acumen, he's more than willing to engage him on the ground. A lot of times guys fight with their ego. They try to go and fight their opponent in their spot. Let's see if this proves to be a very bad decision. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be, and if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. All right, so he lands a jab there. Pretty nicely done, DC. You can really control a fight just knowing how to fight behind your jab. Well, really using his reach advantage there with that punch, DC. Good stick. Oh, and he is getting tagged repeatedly. Nice combination of strikes up top. Oh, beautiful combination up top. I don't understand why the guy is not moving his head. Get your head moving, son. Wow. Good defense to block the strike coming back. Lands the right hand. Oh, single collar tie here. Keeps going back to that jab, keeps throwing that jab, but unable to land. Oliveira gets tagged with a kick now. Let's see if he can wrap. Jeez Louise. I mean, he's cutting him down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Oh, and there's another leg kick for good measure. So doing a really good job with that weapon here tonight. And if you're trying to slow your opponent down, Mission accomplished so far. When you can land that many leg kicks, you start to affect the movement. You start to affect 
the hand. Everything changes when you're blasting someone over and over and over with leg kicks. And you start to see the damage, not only in the legs, but in his facial expression right in the pole. All right, single collar tie now. Nice double leg takedown attempt there, and you gotta think that's something that's gonna give him confidence moving forward in this fight. A lot of confidence when it happens that easily. He took a shot, he got a takedown. What now will stop him from doing it over and over again? Look at him whip his hip into that kick. have already landed for Charles Oliver. Big punch land. Ooh. Really timing his shots nicely. Good tempo, very accurate, finding the range with relative ease. Yeah, he's doing a great job of really overwhelming his opponent oh. with activity. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, big left hook there. Oh! Absolutely bludgeon. That's as good a combination as we have seen out of him here tonight. The last time I saw a combination this good, it was Donald Cerrone beating up on Rick Stewart. Oh, these are some devastating knees, as we might say in Boston, some wicked, effective <laughs> knees. I love when you talk like that. I, know I think it's so, so good. But there's a guy. I love the way you talk, but I love the way this guy fights, and he's throwing those knees in order to shut the lights off of his opponent. He's able to slip the left. Big call punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Trying to find a home for that right hand. Leg kick. Oh, beautiful jab there. It's one thing to have length, of course. That is it. He got him. What a performance. Well, it's not every day in the UFC that you see a fight ended due to a leg kick, but that one was absolutely devastating. He took away that lead leg of his opponent, who became a one-legged fighter, and then it became just a matter of time. So, somewhat anticlimactic here tonight, but not for the winner, as he gets one of the bigger TKO wins of his UFC career. So a seminal moment for him here tonight as he gets the victory by TKO. Huge result inside the Octagon tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herbie Dean has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 10 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by TKO, Charles the Bronx. Well, what a win for that young man tonight by TKO. And if the Why would I aim for the head? He got a bag and he bragged now. I gotta check and say less. Don't you ever.